all about you. Hello and welcome to the show. I am Tanya Marie. I'm an intuitive energy healer, empath, and clairvoyant. I use my gifts to help transform your mind, body, and emotions. Many people today find it hard not to get overwhelmed by life. So I ask you, where is your focus? Where do you hold your emotions? Has everyday life made you focus on things that are less important? Every week, I will be helping my guests identify their stressors caused by block emotions that have manifested in the body. If you're interested in being a guest, please send an email to info at tanyamarie.com. Stay tuned for after our guest, we will be doing a mindful meditation, helping us take time out and reconnect with our breath and our body. Hello and welcome to All About You. I have another guest with me and I'm super excited. I've worked with Paula for a little bit and I am so excited so everybody can hear Paula's story. Paula, thank you for being my guest and talking about your healing journey and your amazing story. So I will stop talking and let you go. Okay, my, my journey started about 10 years ago. I uh, just got so tired I couldn't get off the sofa. Um, so I started seeing doctors and I was first diagnosed with depression, of course, because that's easy for them. Right. And then a few, I uh, kept going back in and kept going back in. They, they did some blood work and told me I was a diabetic. So I started taking a lot of medication there. Um, but I still couldn't get off the sofa. So I kept going in. They said I had Hashimoto's, which is a thyroid disease. Um, so they put me on Synthroid and they start you at it about 15 milligrams and they check your blood every six months and I still couldn't get up. So every six months I went in and it was still too low. So I went from 15 to 30 milligrams to 45 milligrams to 85 milligrams. But all this time you're waiting six months between. So I'm laying around gaining weight and really losing touch with uh, any kind of energy at all. About six years into this journey, I went to San Francisco to see an endocrinologist who uh, bumped me up to where I needed to be for medication on the thyroid. So I did start to feel better at um, going to a professional, uh, a better doctor in San Francisco. But I still um, couldn't fold a load of laundry. I couldn't blow dry my own hair. Um, in 10 years, from 35 to 45, I uh, just really struggled to move, to get up, to go, to do anything. I um, asked my doctor for a brain scan because I really felt intuitively that there was something in my head. Um, my insurance wouldn't pay for it, so I did. And they found a brain tumor, large, bilobed, right in the middle of my forehead. Um, it was Did just you feel it? I had a headache. I've always had migraines, but I had the but the tumor, um, it was, it had gotten to the point where it was so big that I got a migraine that lasted six months. It just, it wouldn't go away. And I just really got to that point where I just end it because I couldn't do that pain any longer. And so that's when I asked for the MRI and they found that tumor. So it had to come out and the sooner, the better. Um, so I had brain surgery, they removed it. Everything went well. Um, my head did stop hurting. I still occasionally have two or three day migraines, which I've dealt with all my life. I popped onto my Facebook feed one day and Tanya was talking to with some people and I joined in that conversation and she was just, um, she asked me what the pain was on the side of my head. And I told her it had been there for years, about 10 years, about the same amount of time that I had been uh, dealing with everything else, this pain around my right ear and down my neck had been constant. I'd been to see acupuncturists, uh, chiropractors, um, nerve people. No one could tell me what that pain around my ear was. I would even started poking my own self in the, around the ear with needles, you know, just to get some kind of relief from this pain. And uh, she asked me what that was. And I told her, I have no idea. And no, <laughs> neither does anybody else. And she told me that spirit was telling her it was, um, I was trying to grow a new tumor and that that was generational. Um, my mom's mom had heaped the responsibility of raising children onto her. And my mom had done the same to me. Um, 
that I had raised my siblings and had an abusive childhood and it had happened to my mom too. And that it was okay to forgive my mom for doing it to me. And it was a generational uh, problem that we had all passed down and that I came into this life. One of the reasons I was here was to stop this um, abuse. And I did. I raised my own daughter and son. Um, I didn't pass it down. They didn't raise each other. They weren't hungry. They weren't cold. They were taken care of. So I did stop it in my own line. And after she told me about this and I was able to think about it and forgive my mom, because I had had this huge uh, anger in, in my soul about being uh, so abused, uh, it went away. It went away that day. It went away the pain that had been in my head around that right ear and down my neck went away and it was constant. It went away in one day. And uh, so I just wanted to, to tell you my testimony that knowing the truth about what your body is doing frees you. And Tanya gave me that truth where I could not have figured that out on my own in a million years. So, and I, I had tried, believe me, I I had reached out for help from e every aspect that I could possibly think of. And I will never, I will forever be grateful to you for giving me that key to unlock that dysfunction that took me out of that pain. Well, you're so welcome. I know some people would ask, well, how, how could it be so easy for you that it only took one day to forgive? No idea. No idea. <laughs> Do you think that you were so sick and tired of being so sick and tired and in pain that you were just like, I'm absolutely done with it, that enough was enough? I think that hearing the truth that um, who would ever think that a her head could be from holding her and anger when, I mean, I just never could have, would have put those two together that this had happened to my mother. This had, she had passed this down to me and where it belonged was at her feet and she is forgiven. She had no other choice. It was what she could do then. And I don't, I don't know. I just hearing the words um, that you said in those few minutes made so much sense to me. I was just so ready to, to hear that the truth about why that pain was there. Now I've opened my life up and this was maybe six weeks ago that you helped me. So now I'm open to everything. Everything's changing now that I understand that we have situations in our lives that are passed down and we need, you know, we just need help connecting the dots sometimes. Yeah, we do. Um, so I feel a lot of energy in your throat. We're going to go there <laughs> when you were talking about it has. So did you feel like you were misdiagnosed? Did you feel like, you know, they did, Oh, it's Hishimoto. It was depression. It was this. Did you feel like you were just misdiagnosed for so many years? Yes. And I still feel like the few medications I'm on are unnecessary. I stopped all the di diabetic medication because I know that you can be a diabetic if you eat a lot of sugar. It's it's a choice. So mm -hmm. uh, I quit all of that. And um, the thyroid medication, you know, I'm still taking that. And I still kind of feel like that's where I'm holding a lot of this emotion. I can feel um, it for my mom. I feel so sorry for her, you know, that she went through what she went through, that she passed that on to me, that it was a wasted life. I just have always felt like all the years I took care of my mom and took care of her children, I always looked at her and felt so sorry for her because she wasted her whole life, you know, chasing things that, um, anyways, it was just a lot of sorrow for a life un unlived, you know, without a lot of love not a lot of care for anything selfishness and you know so I, I feel sorry for her for that and I still carry grief and sorrow I think for myself and that childhood right because I, I keep hearing the words like expression and I have like sensation on like the top of my shoulders and on my neck where I feel like there's like um, a lot of energy still still held where we can do things to express 
whatever emotion is left to feel, as you say, in grief and um, sadness. You know, there's a lot of people, especially, you, you know, your mom was older through a time where they weren't allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. That maybe anybody watching who deals with similar parents or similar situations, I think you could help so many people with your expression on um, maybe the things that you had went through, but the choices that you did differently in your life and expressing those kind of sets it free. And when you were talking about the truth kind of sets you free and knowing that, and I feel like maybe it's your time to talk about it and express. Cause the more I do this, the pain is there's not as much heaviness in my right. throat as expressing, even if it, it doesn't always have to be on the stage or with people, but maybe it's going you know, it's somebody, a friend of yours or going to old folks home or whatever it is, or, you know, living and, and just expressing. Um, it's funny because they're using the phrase your truth, but in a sense that, you know, you weren't allowed to talk 40, 50, 60 years ago. And now we're in a time where we're, it's as important to express ourselves mm -hmm. that, you know, the anger we're talking about, you know, your, your head trauma was held from so much anger and resentment. Well, I've seen it where, you know, people's chakras or physical elements may, may stem from emotions that they're holding and they're harboring and the lack of. And I saw this, especially with um, people in my family who held back in their throat and then got Hishimoto or thyroid because they weren't allowed to express themselves. So I feel like expression, 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 um, whatever that looks like, painting, singing, you know, anything to really release whatever you may be feeling will help so many. It's like a generation thing. <laughs> As you talked about not doing it with mm -hmm. your children, you can clear so many generations and showing because the kids, especially since I have teenagers, younger kids, that. When it's when you're in your teenage years, it feels like it's hard to express yourself because of judgment, and you feel that you're going to be criticized because you have emotions, and that's where it's so hard for people to realize that you know we're all human. We're just trying to figure it out, just love each other. But there's so much judgment. Mm -hmm. Yep, love I, is the only only thing that really matters is love and loving each other and helping each other through our, our struggles. And especially with the teenagers, they're so confused. Hormones are so powerful. Right. I mean, I'm past all of that. The, I think that's why I was just so open to listen now is I was, you know, kind of cuckoo when I, I had hormones to deal with, but mm -hmm. you'll see too, after menopause, life gets very, very um, calm. Like that, the teenagers and those hormones, wow, they they change their minds about what they think every five minutes. They don't know what's true. They don't know. They can't see the, the world from a higher perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard. It's hard to be young now. It is. And there's so much distraction. And I was talking about that with my energy class that I'm, I'm doing level two. And it's all about the brain and about the mind and the body and the focus and how your mind and your energy can heal so much. But it's sometimes very challenging to focus. Our, yeah, our culture has just got it so wrong. I mean, these kids need to start out like if, if these kids had started out with meditation in the morning at school and learning about energy and working with the mind, calming, staying and staying non-judgmental. I mean, there, yes. needs to be, there needs to be school in that, staying non-judgmental. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness, well, a class about forgiveness right. and a class about what really makes us healthy, healthy adults when we're older. I mean, just that one session with you and I just see life so much different just, you know, because of that one key in my life. And I unlocked that in my 20s, uh, the generational um dumping, you know, that thing that we do over and over through all, you know, the habits of a family. Yeah. Um, I could have done, I would have done a lot, a lot more things in my life that I'd wanted to do had I not been carrying so much anger, so much grief around with me. So unlocking that as soon as you can is so important. And I have 
lots of people I'm sending to you. <laughs> well, thank you. I am. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, and I think that I think that's you know you talked about forgiveness and having these classes. You wonder why anxiety is on the rise and everybody can't figure out anxiety. And I'm and I'm like it's pretty simple, but they've made it so not simple. And they're you know and putting this on and you mentioned it about being on um, prescription drugs when you don't feel like you need it. Do we need it for some things? Absolutely. For everything? I don't know. Do we? And th that, no. that's why if you wouldn't have trusted yourself and said, this is what I need, we are an advocate. That's what I love about the show. It's all about you. If we have to be an advocate for our health, for our wellness, for our mind, for our body, for our soul, because if we aren't, nobody will be. And you did that. And you showed like, I knew I was right. I knew something was going on and nobody was listening to me. And it's sad that the insurance didn't even pay for that. Did they get reimbursed when they, did you get reimbursed after they, good. Yeah. As soon as they saw it, they put, they said, well, there's something there we got. We need to add dye. You know, that's another 500 bucks. So they had, the, yeah, they did pay for all of it when there was a tumor. But I had oh. been asking eye doctors all my life, can you see in there? Is there something in my head? I knew since I was young and in, in college, I knew. But when I got my first migraine, I knew. This was the second case. I had another case that was similar. And when I was doing energy work, I said, there's something in your head. She'd gone to two specialists went out and had an aneurysm in her brain and she called yeah. me and she said, thank you because I, she did exactly what you did and said, give me a scan because I know that something's wrong. Cause I told her, I said, you were going to have to push. And she called me and she thanked me. She said, cause if it wasn't for you. She said it was big enough where I have to go get surgery. It would have, it would have not been good. It would have, she would have been gone. Yeah. 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 And she said, thank you. And I said, well, I'm it's, it, you're welcome, but it's more of being an advocate for yourself, you know, and you know, knowing the truth. It <laughs> is, but a lot of, a lot of people, you need someone, I needed someone like you to say the words. Everybody's always says, well, you know, meditate, you can figure it out, meditate, and you'll know, Met do this, do that. But a lot of us are not psychic. A lot of us are not, well, we are all psychic, but a lot of us right. are not connected to, to guides and chant. we can't channel spirit. So uh, just having a health scan with somebody who actually is connected, who actually knows, is a blessing. Yes. And I think that's the greatest thing is that you trusted yourself. <laughs> you trust yourself in me that because a lot of people get and that's where it's unfortunately about this business because there is a lot of scams. So people feel like, how do I know? How do I trust? I say, trust yourself. If something doesn't feel right, you don't do it. I mean, that's what you're born with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I love that. Well, I've always, I've always, I've always trusted God to put in front of me what I need when I need it. And he put you in front of me that day. And I've always followed my own intuition, but I'm not psychic. I could, I always felt like there was something in my head. I always, and, but yeah, you, it, it just, when somebody, it, it, there are levels of knowing and we all need to reach out to people who know more than we do always. And this is the first time I've reached out, you know, really. And, and then I called my mom yesterday and, and she was happy that I had reached out and gotten some help. And, um, she has reached out herself and gotten some help. She needs help with uh, paying her bills. And she, this is the first time she's reached out. So it, it's, it goes, what I'm doing, you're doing is it, it's, uh, yeah, it's a necessary, a necessary. Is your, is your relationship different now with her? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because of that. Yes, definitely. Good. I can love her. Yeah, the the sorrow, the feeling sorry is going away and the just loving her unconditionally because she's a human being. And I know she loves me. I've always known how much she loves me. That's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you for your story and sharing. <laughs> I want to I think let's meditate a little bit. Let's uh let's just meditate. Let's do some mindful meditation. We're going to close our eyes, open up our palms to receive, and we're just gonna breathe. Just kind of letting go of the day, being thankful and having so much gratitude for Paula's story, for her vulnerability to express a piece of her life that is personal so others can learn share and grow and maybe get a little insight that may be going on in their life or emotions that they may be feeling. 
We just breathe. We just focus with our mind and our breath right on our heart, right on our center. We just have so much love inside of us that sometimes we just miss. We forget. We overlook. We get distracted. We just take this time out to breathe and fill into our chest and into our heart. Listen to our heartbeat. Breathing, filling your body for any aches or pains. Sometimes we get busy with life where we stop, where we don't have time to stop and feel. We just stop and breathe. Maybe you have tensions in your muscle. Just breathe into those, relax. To your mind, just envisioning your muscles or bones or joints just releasing and letting go, falling deeper into your chair. And breathe. Bringing so much light. Just envision a beautiful white light coming in and filling up your body. This energy is beautiful and it's peaceful. It's consistent. It's everlasting. It's soft. It lights us up. It feels like a warm blanket all around us. This beautiful, unconditional love. We just need a moment to reconnect again. It's this beautiful love. It's unconditional love that's in and all around us. It's always willing to lend a hand, to help, to nurture, to uplift, reignite. Just fill ourselves up with this light. You just connect with them. Find that you can connect with this beautiful space, this unconditional love. It's rejuvenating every part of you. Just breathe it in and tingle. In your breath, feel this energy, feel this moment. I'm taking three deep, long breaths. Knowing that your connection is strong and that you are worthy of taking time out and reconnecting with yourself. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. Paula, thank you so much thank for you, your Tony. words um, and your story mm-hmm. and all the nice things you said about me. Thank you. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't expecting that, but thank you. Um, and you guys, if you'd like to be a guest, please send a a email to info at tanyamarie.com until next week with a new guest. Paula, have a wonderful day. Hi, I'm Dan Vega and thank you for watching our channel. I want to take a second to tell you about a resource that's helping thousands of people across the country, Blue University. Blue University is the premier online business school for entrepreneurs and business leaders. You know, if you find yourself in a day-to-day grind where you've lost your joy or you're just tired of struggling, then check out blue.university. That's B-L-U dot university. I can promise that you receive nothing short of a multi-million dollar education. And if you want a completely different life in three to six months and a way to create wealth in five years or less, 
then again, check it out. That's blu.university. Find out why blue is the new color of success. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel or to give us a good rating, but that's only if you see value. And when you do receive value, make sure to share it with someone else. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time.